I mean, let's keep it real. Are we really surprised about this story? I mean, Creflo Dollar, it seems like this dude has just always been about the bag. It's not about the word of God. It's not about leading people to salvation. It's not about leading people to Christ. It's about leading people to the ministry bank account. And whoever has the biggest check is who Creflo is going to get behind. No matter who it is, no matter where it is, no matter what time, no matter what the cause is, even if that cause is blatantly and outright against and, and, and opposed to the word of God, if the bag is big enough, he going to support it. And this story is no exception. He is uh, outright supporting Stacey Abrams, has given Stacey Abrams a huge st seal of, uh, of approval in, in front of his entire church in front of his entire church. And I, I wanna watch this video, but I wanna explain to you why this even matters because for those of you who do not know, Stacey Abrams, number one, she's running for governor of Georgia. Number two, she is pro-abortion like big time. I mean, she believes that th this procedure should be happening at, at, at any stage during pregnancy, any stage. But not only that, her solution to inflation, her solution to poverty is abortion because she believes that if women are able to abort their child before, you know, they enter this world, then that's going to help them not be poor anymore, essentially, because, hey, if you have less children, then you have more money in your pocket. You have more cash flow. You can pay your bills easy, easier. Magically, the gas prices are going to decrease because we're having all these abortions. And, and magically, you know, groceries are going to go down. And, and just magically, the cost of living is going to be more affordable because we're deleting our babies at a higher rate. This is what this woman believes in. And, and let me just make something clear. This is a Christian woman. So she says she's a Christian woman. So let's take a, a listen to this clip because it, it's pretty outrageous. Um, and I, I don't even know what else to say about it at this point. I, I just want to say this because I want to see how it sounds. Uh, Governor Stacey Abrams just walked in. And uh, so glad to see you again. So. And also, like, let's not sit here and act like it's a surprise that she walked in. I'm sure this has been planned for many, 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 many weeks. I'm sure that she had to put a 50% deposit down before, you know, that they could schedule a date for her to show up. Like y'all have the camera angle ready to go. It's already on her, already set up. Like y'all knew this was going to happen. Let's not act like it's a surprise. Like I don't expect them to be transparent. I don't expect them to be honest about these things, but let's not just act like we're stupid and that, you know, we we don't have eyes to to see through this uh, you know, this this BS for for lack of better words. I'm sorry. Forgive me, God. But it, it is what it is. Like, bro, I can't. It, it is what it is. Yes, you already know. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, so you already know what to do, right? So you already know what to do, right? So in other words, you already know that we all going to, you know, go out and, and vote for, for Stacey, right? Y'all like y'all already know that. So it's so funny. Like I saw a comment on this video. It said, I wish he was as welcoming to the Holy Spirit in his church as he is Stacey Abrams. Excuse me. It's like, it's so true. It's so true. Like we do all this stuff to to please the world. We do all these things for a, a bag to be friends of this world. But it seems like some of these churches won't go out of their way to please God. And it's sad. It's really sad. We, we need to open our eyes. We, we, re we really need to understand what is going on. And this is nothing new. Like Stuff like this has been happening for a very long time. People have been pimping out the church for a very long time. But now it's just getting more out in the open. Now the enemy is just getting a, a lot more bold. And let's not be blind to that. Let's not be asleep to that. All right. How many of you have already done it? Wow. That's big time. Make it happen. Do what you got to do. And, and we're honored to have you here with us this morning. Make it happen. Do what you got to do. And we're honored to have you here this morning. Make it happen. Get her in office. Do whatever you got to do to get her in office. And the church is clapping. 
I don't know what's up with these people in the in 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 this church. I mean, obviously there's something up with them if they continue to go to this church even after everything that's been going on with Creflo Dollar. I don't know everything that Creflo Dollar has ever done before. I don't. I'm not going to sit here and act like I know everything that he's ever done. I don't follow him like that. But I, I, I know enough to know that that's probably not a person who should be in a position to be leading a church. And it shows because he's leading a lot of people astray. And it shows. But like I said, Stacey Abrams, she claims to be a Christian woman. She was on an interview with CNN. I don't really watch CNN, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't be watching CNN. But I, I found this clip. And the reporter is asking a very good question. I want you to take a listen to Stacey's response to this question, all right? Believes in their human rights. You are a Christian. Uh, you are the daughter of two retired United Methodist pastors. Some uh, Democrats. Joe Biden is... Mm, Methodist. Yo, can y'all, can somebody please explain to me what is up with the Methodist church? Like, yeah, because because y'all be seeing these, this, y'all be seeing this, right? Hold on. I know y'all seen this. Y'all seen this, right? Y'all see that? Y'all seen this. Pastor inviting drag queen to church for children's sermon is a sign of dying United Methodism. The Methodist church is out here, here ordaining drag queens. <laughs> They're out here, you know, doing the most. Some of y'all got to explain to me what is up with the Methodist church because it seems like y'all beliefs do not align with the word of God. But anyway... Let's continue. It's a good example. Have had a complicated sort of relationship or conflict between their faith and the abortion policy. Some Christians, as you know, they believe that life begins at conception. I'm just wondering how you think about your faith. Okay, hold on. Remember that question. But can we just not ignore the fact of what the Bible says, right? And this is super quick, super quick. And I'll get back to the video. Jeremiah 5, I mean, Jeremiah 1, verse 5, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. The Lord gave Jeremiah this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. I'm just going to leave that right there. Let's go back. Let's see what she has to say. With regard to this policy. I have thought about my faith a great deal. In fact, I was anti-abortion until I went to college. And there I met a friend who has my shared faith values, but we started having conversations about what reproductive care and abortion care really is. And when I talk about that, it you had a conversation. So you were seemingly following the word of God until you got to college, which I'm sure is a lot of people. I mean, college can be a pretty demonic place sometimes, right? I mean, let's not even get into that conversation, but you had a conversation with your friend and your friend was the one that led you to believe that this is something that God is okay with. This, see, this is a problem. Like a lot of people, we we have questions. We want to know, you know, what the truth is. But we have an entire book called the Bible that tells us what the truth is. We have access to God. We literally, do y'all not understand? We literally have access to God. Whatever question we have, whatever concern we have, we can take that directly to God. We have access to the living God, but we don't go to him. We go to these other people, other humans who don't know anything, who don't know any more than what we know, but yet we're willing to take their word over God's word was an experience that I had because she was able to give me a different perspective. And over the course of the next few years, I really started thinking about what role should the legislature play? What role should government play? This is health care. This is about a woman's right to control her body. This is about a woman's right to experience and determine her future. And that for me is... You so I, see the argument that I don't like from the pro-abortion side... And, you know, they want to call it pro-choice. They want to sugarcoat it. It's, it's I mean, you are you are supporting a, abortion. Either you're for it or you're not. So if you're supporting it, then you're pro-abortion, right? Like, can we just call it what it is? But the, the argument is so selfish. Because less than like 1% or 2%, less than 2% of 
abortion is as a result of rape or incest, less than 2%. So that means the majority, the vast majority is consensual. So if it's consensual and you're getting pregnant, how then is it such a, a selfish concern of yours that your future is suddenly ruined because of, of a consensual decision that you made. If you don't want to have a baby, then you can use birth control. If you don't want to have a baby, then don't sleep with somebody. If you don't want to have a baby with the person that you're sleeping with, then why are you sleeping with them? But even further than that, if you're a Christian woman standing on the word of God, you should know. You should know. Jeremiah 1.5, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. It's not an issue of, is it a human being in the womb? The answer is yes. At conception, the answer is yes. But even before that, even before we were in the womb, God had a plan for us. God had a relationship with us. And we are directly attacking God when we are choosing to terminate these pregnancies. What else does she have to say? As, my, as a matter of faith means that I don't impose those value systems on others, but more importantly, I protect her rights. I protect her humanity, and that should be my responsibility. So she said her responsibility as a woman of faith is not to impose her views on other people, but to protect the right, protect the rights that they have. You're not supposed to oppose your views on other people if they're incorrect views. But if you have something that is life-giving, if you have the truth, then it is your responsibility as a Christian, as a, a, a disciple of, of Jesus, to share the truth, to share the gospel, even if it is uncomfortable, even if it is uh, offensive. You see, it, it's not gonna be easy as, as Christians for us to, to live in this world because the world hates God. Just as Christ was persecuted, so we will be persecuted. It is not, it, it, it's not our job to befriend this world. It's not our job to comfort this world and, and protect the rights of this world, but it's our, our job to protect the truth of God. Because ultimately, what is this whole thing all about? It's about getting as many people to heaven. It's about getting as many souls to heaven. But it seems time and time again that we are just forgetting that. But like I said, I'm not surprised. Stacey Abrams raises $22 million in two months, far outpacing her uh, opponent, Kemp. And this was in uh, back in July. And you, you remember what I said, you know, Creflo Dollar, he's going to do whatever it takes for that bag. $22 million in two months. They pulling in 11 mil a month. You don't think that, <laughs> you don't think that Stacey Abrams cut uh, Creflo a check? You don't think that Stacey Abrams said, you know what? I need the support of the church. Where can I go? Because look, a, a pastor who is grounded, in the Bible, who is standing strong on the word of God, is not going to give Stacey Abrams an endorsement. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? But Creflo Dalla, a pastor who is motivated by money, that's an opportunity for Stacey Abrams' campaign to gain influence in the church, which she so desperately needs as a Christian woman in Georgia in the South, who is looking for votes. You need that, especially when you're pro-abortion. I mean, if you can get a, a, a church endorsement being pro-abortion, you, 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 you would be a fool not to take it, no matter what the cost is, because, hey, it, it's, a, it's a positive for Stacey Abrams. Obviously, it's a negative for Creflo Dalla to the real Christians who have eyes and ears to see what's going on. But at the end of the day, <laughs> he's getting what he wants, cash, and she's getting what she wants. 
a false sense of influence. It says Stacey Abrams' fundraising continues to accelerate, swamping Republican Governor Brian Kemp and pushing close to $50 million raised in seven months since the Georgia Democrat announced her campaign in December 2020. Not 2020, just in December. But here's the thing, $50 million. $50 million. You'd be a fool to think that she didn't break off uh, Creflo with at least 100000 <laughs> at least a hundred thousand. Look, I don't know. I'm just saying it's very fishy. It smells like cash. It smells like she bought this endorsement. And like I say, Creflo has no problem with giving it up. And you know, the problem with these churches that are so money motivated and not Jesus motivated is that the casualties, meaning the people who are going to be misled and misguided and the people who are going to be in this church and are ultimately going to fall away from God because of the example that was set by the leader in this church. And a lot of people are going to take that example that they had, that experience that they had in this church, and they're going to carry that experience with them for the rest of their life. And every time a new opportunity comes where they have a, an opportunity to go to a new church or to, to experience Jesus in a, in a different way, in a, in, a, in a more truthful way, their guard is going to be up. Their defenses are going to be up. Why? Because that's how it works. You know, oftentimes people get burned in church and that's the last time that they will allow themselves to get burned in church because then they'll just simply stop going. Then they'll, they'll just simply stop seeking God. But hey, I, it, it, I'm not going to be the person judging Creflo when it comes time for him to stand in front of God. And I can only imagine, you know, what's going to happen. I think the only thing that we can really do at this point is just pray. Pray for Creflo, yes. Even if you don't agree with Creflo, here's why you should pray for him, because he has influence within the body of Christ. There are still people who look at him as an example to show them to the way to Christ, and they don't see it how we see it. They're not spiritually mature enough to see it, and that's why we need to pray for him for those other people so that they can encounter the true living God and not this false prosperity gospel, this, you know, give me a bag and I'll do whatever you say, you know, God, but the real God who is after their hearts. So like this video, because that does a lot with the algorithm in terms of recommending it to other people. And let me know what you think. All right, drop a comment. I'm out.